Hey everybody, it is Karen with Are You Prepared Mama? And today I'm going to show you how to take any water, including disgusting, filthy pond water, and make it not only safe to drink, but good tasting. Make sure you stick around for the end of the video to see my best method on making it both safe and the best tasting to drink. some pond water. My husband was good enough to walk down to the pond and to get this for me. And I'm going to, going to pour some into a one quart jar, kind of as our comparison and test jar. All right, so I'm going to fill it up. And what I want to do is I want to show you something. I have a little device here which measures total dissolved solids, and we are going to measure the total dissolved solids in the pond water. And in the pond water, the total dissolved solids, I know you can't see it over there, are 215. That's what we're measuring now in this pond water, is 215. So I'm going to take this out and set it aside, and we're going to begin the process of working on making our water safe and potable, or drinkable. So. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a two liter soda bottle and it doesn't matter the type of soda. It doesn't even have to be soda. But I think my kid's favorite part of this whole thing is the drinking of the soda that was in the two liter bottle. So we're gonna start, I'm gonna take the lid off of the water bottle, off of the soda bottle, and I am going to put it on a piece of wood and I am going to use a larger gauge nail and hammer several holes in the lid so that when I put it back on, water can flow through it easily. So I put a piece of wood down, I take my large gauge nail and my hammer, and I'm going to make several holes about that size. One more. Okay, so I have hammered a bunch of holes into our lid to our water bottle, and that will allow water to filter through the, the particulate matter filter that we're going to make next. So that's the next thing we're going to do. I'm going to take my, um, my two liter water bottle, and I'm going to cut the bottom off. And I'm just using my regular pocket knife that I carry on me every day. Okay, so now I have a two liter water bottle. I have a lid and I have the bottom, which we don't need anymore. Okay, so I have cut off the bottom from the soda bottle. I'm gonna go ahead and put our lid back on the soda bottle and screw it on. And then I'm going to make a particulate filter. All it is, is some clean old rags. They're actually, we purchased them, but this is t-shirt material. So that works really well for this. And I'm gonna stuff it down into the water filter. I'm just going to use two of them because they they will do well filtering out the particulate matter. The other thing you need to keep in mind as I'm doing this is that you're going to lose about half of your water to the t-shirt material. 
So make sure that you're gathering more water than you actually need in order to do this. So let's go ahead and I'm going to pour pond water through our particulate water filter. And you'll notice that it is filtering through the bottom, which is exactly what we want. And all this is going to do is to filter out dirt that we can see. This isn't going to filter out other dirt. It's just going to filter out the dirt that we can see. So if it still looks somewhat cloudy, if it still looks slightly discolored, that doesn't matter. That's not what we're trying to get out with this. And while we do that, I'm going to put my lid on this one so we always know which one was the one that we started with. And you'll see that the water is filter filtering through nicely. So that's what we want when we punch the holes with the nail and the hammer. That's what we're wanting to do is to let it be able to come through well. And because I'm going to show you at the very end three different methods that I use to make the water potable, not just clearer, but potable. I want to have a full quart in each of my jars that I'm going to do. Now we're going to do this second. And picking it up will actually speed the process along because the more water goes into the bottom, the greater the pressure, so the slower the water is going to come out. So if you pick your water filter up and let it filter the water down through, there's less pressure, so it's going to go through faster. Now I'm going to go ahead and test it one more time with our total dissolved solids tester. It really shouldn't have changed much in the way of the total dissolved solids. And it changed it a little bit. It's now 201 as opposed to 215. So it did work a little bit, but that's not why we used the particulate matter filter. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to take you outside and I'm going to show you how you can make chlorine bleach from pool shock. Okay, so we are outside at my house. Uh, you're going to hear cars going by. I'm not gonna pause every time they go by because it'll be a lot. So, but I wanna walk you through the process of making chlorine bleach from pool shock. And that's what I have right here is just ordinary pool shock. And we're gonna make a gallon of chlorine bleach using this pool shock. It's also, we're outside also because the fumes of this inside is going to be way too much. So we need to make sure that we're outside and you do too if you're going to make chlorine bleach because the fumes, I tried this the first time just cutting open the pool shock inside and it overwhelmed my system. So make sure that you're outside when you're doing this. Another note that I want to make is you need to make sure that you're using protective gear when you are working with pool shock and your chlorine bleach. I normally wear glasses, but I don't often wear them for filming, so you may not have seen me in them before. But I'm gonna wear my glasses to keep my eyes clear. I am also going to wear nitrile gloves to keep my hands protected and safe. Now, the reason why it is good to make your own chlorine bleach using pool shock is that chlorine bleach, once it is made, only has a shelf life of about six to 12 months. Pool shock has a shelf life of up to five years and even after that it's just less effective so it would take more of the pool shock to make the same concentration of chlorine bleach so that's something to keep in mind also the great thing about using pool shock is that you can make the bleach up as you need it you don't have to make it all up at once and so your bleach is it's going to be fresher because you're making it yourself. The other thing that I want to mention, because I don't have an opaque container, is that it is best 
to store your bleach in an opaque container. Um, some people use old bleach bottles to store their bleach in, which would be perfect. I didn't have an old bleach bottle for this demonstration. But if you don't have an opaque container, then what you can do is you can store your bleach in an area that will not see light because that will help keep it fresher and more potent for longer. So this is what we're gonna do. I have a gallon of distilled water. I'm going to take and pour half of that gallon into my empty gallon. Okay, once I have about half a gallon in there, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut open my pool shock just at the corner. Being careful not to cut my gloves. And even opening that, I can tell you that is way, way potent. So I'm going to take and measure one teaspoon of pool shock into my container. You can use a funnel. You don't have to. Uh, but now that I've got the pool shock opened, I am going to put it back into a gallon size Ziploc baggie and fold it down so that it stays fresher longer and zip the baggie up. Now, once I have the pool shock in the container, I'm gonna put the lid on and I'm gonna gently swirl it. because that will allow the pool shock to dissolve. And if you've ever taken chemistry class, you know that you start with liquid, you add your solid, and then you add the rest of your liquid, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. So I started with liquid, I added my solid, and now I'm going to pour the rest of the liquid in. And boy, can I smell the chlorine in this. All right, now we have one gallon of chlorine bleach and we are going to head back inside and I'm going to show you the rest of how you take and make your water potable. Okay, everybody, so we are back inside. I have my one gallon container of chlorine bleach. Now, the one thing I do wanna tell you and make very, very clear, as soon as this filming is done, I am going to write bleach on this container because right now it's in a water bottle and that's a dangerous thing. So we wanna make sure I will write bleach on every side and I will color the top to make sure that this is not confused for water. So I'm going to take my bleach and I am going to, it only takes, believe it or not, one drop of bleach to purify one quart of water. So all I need is one drop and then I'm gonna let that sit that will purify that water to make it safe for drinking. Okay, now if we are not talking about bleach, another way that you can make your water safe for drinking, something that will kill viruses, bacteria, protozoa, and other things like that, just like the bleach does, is provo iodine. And I will put a link to an article that, um, that I, an article from my website at the bottom, and that will link to an article from um, PubMed, I believe, which shows you how much provo iodine, 10% provo iodine, you will need to purify one quart of water. And that happens to be 19 drops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop 19 drops. Three, six, seven, Now, the thing about this that you need to realize is that you need to let your iodine treated water sit for 15 to 30 minutes in order to kill anything that is in it. So that is, make sure you're doing that because it doesn't kill almost instantaneously, more like the bleach does. Now, this is my secret weapon in this whole thing. This is called a zero water water filter. What this does is it will take our total dissolved solids from either of these and bring it down to zero. So not only are you going to get healthy water that is free of bacteria, protozoa, 
viruses, you're going to get water that is completely filtered of any particulate matter and so it tastes good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the top off. I've already set this up. You're going to, you have to put water through the water filter. So soak the water filter, put water through it, um, which I've already done. And now I'm going to, one more time, I'm going to test the total dissolved solids in my chlorine. And that is reading 220 after I put the chlorine in, but that makes sense. So now we're going to take this and we're gonna put it through your zero water water filter. Now this is a six cup. I got the smaller one on purpose because I'm not gonna be using it often. They also have a 10 cup water filter and I will link to that below in the comments. So make sure that you check there. This is going to filter out anything dangerous and you'll see it's already starting to come out the bottom. So once I have enough water in here, what we're going to do is we're going to pour that into a clean cup that I got and we're going to test the total dissolved solids again so I can show you that the zero water filter does what it says that it's supposed to do. Okay, so we have our filtered water here. This is a clean cup. I just got it off of the, the rest of the cups that we have. We're going to pour the water in here and we are going to test it with our total dissolved solids tester. So that was our bleach. I put the total dissolved solids in. It reads 0, 0.00. Safe to drink, safe to use for cooking, safe to use for brushing teeth, anything like that. So my recommendation for your safest and best tasting water is to use either pool shock to make chlorine bleach so that you kill anything in here or to use your iodine, which needs to sit. So it's a 10% solution of Provo iodine, 19 drops per quart, and that needs to sit for between 15 and 30 minutes. But then whichever way you tried, decide to do, put it through your zero water water filter and it will filter out not just chlorine, but for those of you who like me, don't like other things in your water, regular water that you get from a tap, it has, there are different qualities of water across different parts of the United States. And this, which came with the zero water filter, shows you different water qualities. Here in Illinois, we are a yellow water quality, which usually has high, high contaminant levels in our tap water, um, between 201 and 300 of the total dissolved solids in here. So, but with the zero water, the interesting thing is not only does it filter out, um, it filters out antimony, arsenic, barium, beryllium, cadmium, chromium three and six, copper, iron, lead, manganese, mercury, selenium, silver, thallium, and zinc. It also filters out asbestos, chlorine, cyanide, fluoride, for those of you who do not like the fluoride in the drinking waters, nitrates and nitrites, all down to zero total dissolved solids. So that is my secret method for if we're ever without water and have to drink our pond water, that is what we're going to do. We're going to use the zero and we are going to use chlorine bleach to kill any bacteria, viruses, and germs, which chlorine bleach will kill them all. So when you are on your journey to filter your water so that your family can use any type of water, whether it is from the tap or pond water, so to make it safe and potable for your family, remember, you got this mama.